Hello, so today we are going to do a Jayotaku fish print. Jayotaku is Japanese. And we are going to print this fish form. I find that a foam brush works best to get the detail of the fish. But if we don't have a foam brush, you can just paint on the paint with um, a paintbrush. But we just use liquid tempera paint, which is the squirt bottle tempera that's in our green baskets. You're going to roll out the paint, make sure you have an even coating on the um, sponge brush, sponge roller, and you're going to roll this onto the fish. You don't need it nice and thick and gloppy, but you just want to get this rolled on all of the surfaces, even the side of the fish. But the bottom of the fish is flat, so obviously you wouldn't roll ink or roll actually roll paint onto that. Now, jayataku is di typically traditionally done with real fish. When fishermen would uh, catch a fish and they wanted to remember it before they cut it up and ate it, they would do a jayataku, a fish print. All right, so you want to get paint on most of it. You can see I don't have much paint there or there. Um, there's a few spots here. I don't have any in the mouth, but that's okay. My paper's probably not going to get in the mouth, to be quite honest with you. You're going to take the roller and you're going to lay it to make sure the handle is on the side of the tray. Don't let it fall into the tray because then the handle's messy for the next person who wants to use it. So I chose blue and I have blue on my placemat so that's not good. So I'm going to pick up my fish very carefully, move it out of the way and use a paper towel to clean off this paint because I don't want this paint to get on my paper. I need a nice clean area. So then I lay my fish back down. And then the best, your best bet is to use some thin paper. And I will make sure that you have thin paper out. You want thin paper. The thicker drawing paper isn't going to be malleable and bend around our fish. You obviously will need to write your name and the day you have art on your paper. And then with your name up, you're going to take and lay this paper down onto your fish. Now this is the simplest way, one color and print. If you want to add a little bit more detail, you could get a second color, squirt just a little bit in a, in a mixing tray, just a little bit, and you could paint that on to some of the edges and try and blend that in. Now you don't want to paint it on real thick again and you don't want to get it on the blue placemat after we spend all that time cleaning it. Here I am getting paint on the blue placemat, so you want to do your best to avoid that. All right, so I just added a little bit of detail. You can go further. You could actually do where your fish changes from blue to black all the way if you like. All right, so now we're going to do a so now we're going to do a Gaiotaku print. So you're going to lay this down on your paper. If I lay my paper this way, it doesn't fit. So you're going to lay it down onto your fish and you don't want it to move up or down or sideways. So you're going to hold this down and then you're going to bend the paper around the fish. Feel through the paper to where the fins are and where the tail is. So see how the paper is getting a little bit wrinkly because this form of fish, this form is really round and 3D. So your paper is really going to bend around and wrinkle. Okay, then you're going to pull your paper off and there is your Gaiotaku print. I didn't do very well around the head because my paper wrinkled. So if I wanted, I could try to lay this back down on the fish, leave my paper not wrinkled and rub and see if that helps. And it helped a little bit. All right, so then this form you would take over to the sink, you would run the water, not full blast, you get a sponge and you would clean this off and you get in all these little cracks and crevices 
and then you would dry it off with a paper towel, a couple of paper towels, probably four paper towels. You'll dry it off so that the next person could go. Now you don't have to clean it off if the next person's gonna use the same colors, all right? So this is a Gaiotaku print that would then go on the drying rack. When you get it back, the paint is dry and sometimes it doesn't look so pretty. Like I don't even see the eye of the fish here. And so you're gonna go back and you're gonna add some details. So you could use any kind of drawing media to add details that you like, any drawing media. I'm going to use a colored pencil. So I'm going to need my colored pencil sharpener. I'm going to need a paper towel to sharpen over the paper towel. All right, so then I'm gonna go back and add those details for the fish. So there was an eye here, so I'm gonna add an eye. Um, there's some really nice scales shown here. This fish doesn't seem to have much of a side fin, so maybe I can go through and I can see all these nice scales and go back and add just a few. It doesn't have to be every single little scale. Go back and add some detail. Because just simply printing your Gaiotaku print isn't going to be enough. You need to fix it. or Because you know, printmaking, when you print, it's not perfection. There's always going to be some imperfections. So it looks nicer if you go back and you add some, some detail. Show it's really here. I'm trying to find the texture of the scales. And I know that we had some lines here. You can see them in the paint. They seem to be fairly flat, but we did have some gills. See what you can come up with. You could draw a whole environment. You could get some watercolor paint out and you could fill in some of these areas with some watercolor paint. I think what might look nice is a really thin paintbrush and some watercolor paint. Color pencil gives a more subtle effect. Watercolor might um, be a little bit more bolder. So with the watercolor, I'm using a really tiny paintbrush to show detail. Yeah, it's much bolder. And I can add some lines in here that maybe are just a little bit bolder using this tiny, tiny brush. I'm hardly pressing down on the brush because I don't want it to make a thick line. If I press down on the brush, I'm gonna get this thick line, but just leaving it up on its tiptoes, I can get a smaller, thinner line. It's not nearly as thin as the color pencil, but it just adds a little bit more depth to our print and not quite so much of it looking kind of like a blob of paint that's in the shape of a fish. So we kind of want to add something. So I have a couple of other examples. This one I printed in black paint and you can see the black had a lot of blue and green in it so it didn't really print out a dark black unfortunately but there's nothing we can do about it. And then I went back with a silver metallic color pencil to add and fill in the white. That would be pretty simple to do, just to take a color pencil, fill it in. A fluorescent crayon might be real interesting with black or brown um, to fill that in. You're not coloring the whole thing over the paint. When it's dry, you're filling in those white spaces. So, and there's white spaces here, and those are the spaces that are filled in here with the color pencil. Another thing that I did that you might like is I took a fine tip Sharpie, which are in those orange containers in the red cubbies, and I traced around all the changes in the value. So here, if we look closer, you can see that's a darker color of magenta paint. And then in between here, it's a lighter color. So what I did was I just basically w went around all these wobbly spaces that showed the blobs of paint and traced around the changes in value, the dark and the light. 
So you can see a little bit of the eye, but then the paint smushed over the eye. And then I tried to also go around when I changed from turquoise to violet and magenta. When turquoise and magenta mixed together, they make a violet color. And so then I even traced around the edges where that was left white. And I just really like this effect. It adds a lot of detail. It, it almost abstracts your artwork. It almost makes your fish abstract, like you have to look closely to see that it's a fish. All right, and then you could always paint the background around there. You could do black, that would really make this stand out. Maybe black watercolor um, would be nice. You would definitely want to use a thin brush to get around these edges here, and that would make this stand out. So there are lots of options once you print your fish once it's dry, how you can add just a little bit of something so that it's just not a blob of paint that's in the shape of a fish, that you make it look more like a fish, either with color pencil, watercolor, this is color pencil. Um, this one, when it's dry, I will definitely go back and add an eye because the eye's missing on this one. So I don't have to be upset that the eye's missing because I know I can go back and add that. I might add some blue in here and some blue in here to make that fin look like it's touching and filling in a little bit more. This has some really nice scale texture right here that I can see, so that's nice too. So this is how you are going to create a Japanese fish print and then how you're going to make it look and add just some details to make it stand out a little bit more.